Good evening and welcome inside the Trojan Fieldhouse. I'm Steve Ulry welcoming you into day number two, the semifinals of the 2014 Great Midwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships. A terrific set of semifinals set for us tonight. The number one seed in homestanding Treveca Lady Trojans hosting the fifth seeded Ursuline Arrows here in game number one. In game two later on tonight, Greg Ruff will have the call of the number two seed Cedarville Yellow Jackets taking on the third seeded Panthers of Kentucky Wesleyan College. The winners meet tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock for the 2014 Great Midwest Athletic Conference Tournament Championship. Trojans and Arrows at center court ready to go. Treveca in the home white trimmed in purple. After some scrambling, the Trojans retrieve the loose ball. Christina Kirtner with it into the front court. Ursuline in the road blue, trimmed in yellow. These teams just met last Saturday. Treveca swept the two series meetings in the season, 86-75 at Ursuline on January 25th. 89-79 last Saturday here at Treveca. Kirtner, nice strong drive down the left side of the lane. Christina Kirtner with the bucket. Honorable mention, all-conference selection for the Trojans, joining Anna Mitchell, who made the second team, and Casey Britt Bell, a first-team honoree. Into the lane for Ursuline. Jenny Grigsby had it deflected away, but picked up by Brianna Woods. Here's Tajanae Wells. She spins, and she's called for a travel. Wells with 31 last night in an 89-79 win over Davis and Elkins in the first round. A mild upset, the five seed over the four. Trojans up 2-0, first minute here. Christina Kirtner. Haley Felker, the guards up front. Casey Britt Bell, Anna Mitchell, Sarah Raby. Here's Bell, baseline. Leans in over Wells, missed the shot. Tajanae Wells, the rebound. Outlets it to Erica Huber, GMAC freshman of the year, 5'4 freshman from Anna, Ohio. Here's Grigsby into the lane over Raby, and I believe Sarah Raby will be called for the foul. The freshman from Lynchburg picks up her first. Wrong place, wrong time there for Raby as she got turned around, committed the foul, and Jenny Grigsby, a 5'9 freshman from Frankfurt, Ohio, will go to the line. First free throw is good, and the arrows are on the board. Welcome back inside the Trojan Fieldhouse. We are nearing the end of halftime here in game one, our first semifinal of the night, and the number one seed and the homestanding Trebekah Lady Trojans trailing Ursuline, the 5 seed, 37-31. It's always tough to beat a team three times in one season, and that's no different here as Ursuline, a team much improved over last season. This team last year won four games, and they've, they're over 500 this year. After going four and 22 a year ago, they stand at 14 and 13, and Coach Shannon Sword, an 04 graduate of Cleveland State, doing a tremendous job, and she's got a lot of young talent. Tajanae Wells is a freshman. Erica Huber, the conference freshman of the year. Jenny Grigsby is a freshman. So a lot of a lot of good young players. Laney Lewis, who played a lot in that first half, she's just a freshman. A lot of this team's going to be back. Of the players that played significantly in that first half, Katie Capello, the lone senior. Sinead Bernard, a senior. She saw a few minutes. But uh, a much improved Ursuline team and giving Treveca all they can handle. And the arrows start with the ball here in the second half. They lead it 37-31. Here's Huber. Trojans in a zone to start the second half. Trying to protect against that foul trouble they picked up in the first half. Wells, the quick shot from the baseline is missed. Sarah Raby, the rebound, and the Trojans back the other way with their first possession of the second half, trailing by six. Turnaround jumper for Anna Mitchell, missed. On the rebound, loose. Grigsby knocks it to Huber, and Erica Huber will bring it to the front court. Huber down the lane, up, off the glass, count it. First two-point field goal, Huber with five, and the lead back to eight, 39-31, Ursuline. Here's Felker looking for Mitchell. Anna turns off the glass, count it. Trojans, a concerted effort here on the first, in the first two possessions of the half to get the ball down low to Anna Mitchell, and she converts. That's her first points of the night, 39-33, Ursuline with the lead and a whistle, and she makes them both. Two-point game, Rebecca 58, Ursuline 56, 7.05 left. Boyer lines up a three left side, good. 
Paige Boyer, first three of the night for the sophomore from Mount Juliet. She's got nine. And the Trojan lead to five, their largest since the first half. Haley Felker, the steal, trying to outrace Wells down the floor, lays it up and in. Haley Felker's first field goal of the night. She's got three, and the lead is seven. Here's Huber down the lane. Leaves it for Lewis. Lewis to Ricketts in the paint. Spins it in the paint, has it knocked away. Ball loose on the floor, picked up by Kirtner. Kirtner splits the defenders in traffic, has the shot block, got it back. Felker lines up the three, good. Haley Felker's first three, she's got six. Trojans getting contributions from multiple people tonight. They lead it by 10, 68-58. Deflection and a near steal, and Coach Shannon Sword wants to talk it over. 30-second break, we'll take it with them. 4.50 to play. Rebecca 68, Ursuline 58 on the Trojan Sports Network. Welcome back inside the Trojan Fieldhouse, the first semifinal in the books, and the Trevecca Nazarene University Trojans advance to tomorrow's championship with a 79-69 win over Ursuline College. And we are joined by Marissa Jennings, who provided a big spark off the bench tonight. Marissa, first of all, congratulations on the win, and uh, big minutes and big production from you off the bench tonight. Thank you, thank you. What was the message at halftime? You guys took the lead early, but then Ursuline came back, led by six at the half. They were really getting on the line a lot. The officials were calling things pretty tight. What did Coach say at the half? Um, basically, as if you watched, you know, or listened, the fouls were not in our favor at all. Right. And I think we're one of the most emotional teams I've ever been on. Like, good and bad, we're just so emotional all the time. And I think the first half, um, we let our emotions get the best of us with the refs. And I know we're on the bench screaming at the refs, which is totally unacceptable. And um, Coach just basically addressed our issues with the ref and is like, you know, change your attitude, change your how high your emotions are right now and just, just play together, play as a team and be as aggressive as they are and we'll get those fouls the second half and that's exactly what happened. What's your mindset coming in off the bench? You know that your team's kind of piling up the fouls. Anna's got three and then four and Casey Britt picks up four. And what, What's your mindset coming in of 26 from three and 23 of 29? Uh, at the free throw line. Trojans with a very balanced attack. A lot of players played significant minutes and a lot of players scored. And we're joined now courtside by Coach Gary Van Anna. First, Coach, it's good to be back so courtside with you. Yeah, Steve, it's nice to have you, man. I, I've, uh, I've missed uh, uh, one of our original uh, voices of the Lady Trojans, man. You did a great job when you're here. I know you did a great job over at the – over at the radio station, man, we, we listen to you every morning. But uh, I appreciate it's nice that. to have you here. It really is. Let's talk about this game because, boy, it went back and forth. You all got <laughs> off to a pretty decent start. Officials calling it really tight throughout, but it's kind of the player's job to adjust to that. First half, your girls seemed to struggle with that. Piled up a lot of fouls. Ursuline had a 13-1 to advantage in free throws in the first half. Seemed like you, had, you made a concerted effort in the second half to get the ball in the post, take the ball to the basket, draw fouls, get to the line. He shot 25 free throws in that second half. Well, we, we talked about it at halftime. And, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's a, it's a new rules, new whatever. We try to adjust. Every game has been different. You know, it's just been a, it's been crazy. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that um, both teams have to play, have to adjust. You know, in, in, in that situation, last time we played, um, you know, it was uh, it was uh, the hand check rule versus the displacement at the post. That's what the fouls were even doing that way. We, we didn't – we didn't have that. We weren't as aggressive. We, I thought we, uh, uh, and me included, I thought we uh, were so more concerned about the officiated game instead of just focusing. If you notice in the second half, all I did was coach my basketball team. I don't think I said one word to an official about anything. Um, I, could, I told the girls, that's not who we are. You know, we're, we're, that's just not the kind of team we are. It's funny you say that because Marissa said the same thing. She yeah. said, that's not like us, and it's unacceptable. We yeah. were focusing too much on the officials instead of worrying about playing the game. Yeah, and it's not that they were focused on officials; it's just the calls. You know, sure. you, you everybody wants to call it. And it, it Thanks, coach. Thanks, Steve. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, your final score: seventy-nine to sixty-nine. Trevecca gets the win here in the semifinal. They move on to the championship game tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, and they'll await the winner of our second semifinal, set to start here in about thirty minutes between Kentucky Wesleyan and Cedarville. Again, your final stats. 
four Trojans in double figures. Casey Britt Bell with 13, 12 for Sarah Raby, 10 points each for Helen Mitchner and Christina Kurtner. Kurtner also with 10 rebounds, or excuse me, 13 rebounds, six assists, a couple of steals as well. So she just stuffed the stat sheet in 37 minutes of action tonight. Nine each for Marissa Jennings and Paige Boyer, eight for Haley Felker, seven for Anna Mitchell. And uh, one, one point for Kylie White. Megan Kilburn didn't score, but played nine solid minutes off the bench. 19 for Jenny Grigsby of Ursula, and she leads all scorers. 19 points, 10 rebounds for Tajane Wells. Unfortunately, she also turned it over eight times as the Arrows committed 26 turnovers tonight. Seven points for Katie Capello, six for Lainey Lewis, five for Emma Ricketts, two points for Brianna Woods, and Autumn Jones and Sinead Bernard both played but did not score. Your final score, 79-69. Trevecca wins it. They're into the final tomorrow afternoon at 2. Stay tuned. Greg Ruff will have the call. Semifinal number two coming up in about 30 minutes here on the Trojan Sports Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to the Trojan Fieldhouse inside the Mark R. Moore Physical Education Center. We are coming to you live on this Thursday evening, a historic night in the history of Trevecca basketball, basketball in the Trans-South, and on the NAIA level as the Trojans not only wrap up another home season of basketball here at the Trojan Fieldhouse, but they'll also finish up with their final home games as a member of the Trans-South Athletic Conference and their final home games as members of the NAIA as Trevecca moves on to the NCAA Division II Great Midwest Athletic Conference starting next season. Good evening, I'm Steve Ulrey, ready to bring you live coverage of tonight's women's matchup between the Lady Trojans who come in at 10 and 16 on the season, six and eight in the Trans-South, and the second ranked and defending national runner-up Union Lady Bulldogs who come in at 27 and two, 14 and one in the Trans-South, and Coach Mark Campbell continuing a stellar run at the helm of the Union Bulldogs as they are uh, on track to try to battle for another national title. Coach Campbell's teams have won four national titles in his 13 years, all in the last seven years. They've finished as runner-up last year, losing in the national championship game to Azusa Pacific, and they are right there again, ranked second in the country and will certainly be one of the favorites going into the national tournament next month in Frankfort, Kentucky. Senior night, we'll be honoring four seniors tonight. For the women, Elizabeth Pentecost and Chelsea Taylor. For the men, Keith Morris and Michael France. Also, it's WBCA Pink Zone Night. The women, if you'll notice on your screen, you see the women warming up with pink zone T-shirts on, pink socks, pink headbands, raising awareness and funds tonight for the K. Yao Fund for cancer research and awareness named after the late, great NC State women's coach, Kay Yao, who just passed away last year. Also